we go. So no questions for 15 minutes, please. OK, I'd like to begin. I hit my OK button. It didn't work. There we go. Uh, welcome to a bit of an experimental course. Uh, I've never taught anything like this before. I don't know if any course like this has existed. This is a class overview of an unusual course. Uh, the official title is uh, Extraordinary Concepts in Physics, uh, but uh, I like to think of it as Physics X. Uh, this is a class overview of what will be seen, so if you're interested in actual physics, you want to go to one of the future lectures on this list if they yet exist. Otherwise, prepare to be bored or just find out the details of what's going on. Um, so, let's see. So this is the first presentation. Uh, it's only information about the lecture. Um, so what's going to be done here is uh, we're going to be talking about um, um, extraordinary physics and um, extraordinary concepts in physics. This is a very strongly concept-based class. Let me go to the next one. So physics X is... Um, pronounced physics X. It's not physics 10. You didn't miss nine lectures and suddenly lucking on the 10th, uh, not the Roman numeral 10. So it's, it's labeled after something uh, uh, a mythical, not a mythical, a legendary, there we go, legendary course taught by um, Richard Feynman at Caltech uh, many, several decades ago where he would extemporaneously speak about questions about some really cool concepts in physics. It wasn't, my understanding is it wasn't a course for credit, although this course will be. Uh, this course is different than that. I will try to go through many of the major concepts in physics. And the idea is to get to the concepts. So I'll tell even more about what the course is about next, uh, next slide. I'll say who I am. Uh, I will then give specific aspects for the internet audience, people who are following this uh, on the internet in some way. And after that, I'll talk about aspects of the class specific to uh, the audience that's right here in the, uh, in the studio here at Michigan Tech of people who are taking this class uh, for credit. So in case you wanted to know, yes, this class is a real college class. And people are taking this and getting real college credit for this. And I'm a real college professor. OK, so as I said, uh, this is named after a famous freewheeling uh, course originally taught at Caltech by Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman is one of the more famous physicists. Uh, he uh, won a Nobel Prize for uh, quantum mechanics and things he did in quantum mechanics. Uh, he's had many very interesting original thoughts all over physics, research physics. But he's also known for his, the way he, he teaches physics. And uh, he has produced several books that are really just amazing to read because he gets right through the equations and gets to the fundamental concepts in a way that I haven't seen anywhere ever. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. However, it is a goal that might be aspired to. Uh, so the basic concepts in physics I find are really cool. Uh, they underlie all reality, for one thing. So for people who are really interested in reality, this is your course. Um, they are naturally attractive. I notice on the internet that people are attracted to discussions of uh, very basic concepts. And many times on many bulletin boards I see people trying to, um, struggling to comprehend them. I struggle to comprehend them, and I have for much of my life. Uh, so, as I like to say, sometimes you bring people up to your own level of incompetence. So possibly I can bring you up to my level of misunderstanding of some of these things. Or possibly your level already greatly exceeds that. Uh, but hopefully I can give you the benefit of my casting about in the waters uh, for, for years. Um, many, student, many physics majors enter becoming physics majors. I was a physics major way back uh, when f was equal to square root of ma way long ago. Um, uh, hope to learn many of the fundamental basic concepts in physics. There, many of them are interested in lots of interesting aspects of quantum mechanics and general relativity. And I remember I was somewhat disappointed as a physics major at a different school uh, that it wasn't being taught. Now the reason, so we can get, I'll get, won't jump. Um, so the reasons why um, they're not taught are usually, I'm told, three reasons. One is it's too complex for undergraduates. So when I, I mean, quantum mechanics is taught, but it's taught most, mostly mathematical. And when I would quiz different, not quiz, when I would ask curiosity-based questions of different professors, I found that they were really more interested in getting through the problem set than really delving into the fundamental what's going on here. And quantum mechanics in particular is really, really strange. And special relativity is pretty strange too. Um, so I was also told that it requires mathematics too advanced. Now that's a problem if you want to actually do research and you want to write down things. But in order to understand some of the basic concepts, 
you really just have to understand a little bit of math, but the, the experimental setups that were involved and what it is these experimental setups are seeing. And if you see enough exper experiments and results of experiments, then you're sort of starting to get uh, an understanding of the concepts even without the math. So that's one of the places I want to go with this. Also one of the reasons why a course like this is generally not taught at universities is that it's not a prerequisite for, for really anything. You don't have to know the fundamentals of the two-slit experiment uh, in order to go on to higher level physics courses. You need to understand conservation of momentum and angular momentum and energy and things like that. And those are taught very well. But the really cool aspects sometimes are not that important because they don't, they're not really drawn on. Also, uh, Michigan Tech is a strong engineering school. So the engineers don't really, they need to know how to balance force, tension uh, equations a lot more than they need to understand you know, aspects of uh, you know, general relativity, why, what curved space might mean. They just don't need to really know that. So this course, in my opinion, then seems to fill a need. Uh, so I will attempt, strangely enough, to use as little math as possible. So you won't need to know about tensors or even differential equations or really even all that much in calculus or, or algebra. I'm going to try to get down to the fundamental experiments and just describe them conceptually as to what's going on and why this complex thing results down to this experiment and that experiment. And many times I'll play guests in the audience. Okay, here's a fundamental experiment in physics. What do you think is going to happen? And some of these are bizarrely simple and bizarrely hard at the same time. It's very easy to guess wrong. And these are very simple physics experiments. And uh, I think the physics major might do better than, than other people, but uh, I would think that even the um, physics major who did very well in all his, his or her classes might not get many of these concept questions or all of these concept questions uh, correct. Um, so, as I said, when possible, I relate basic physical uh, experiments that underlie these concepts. So, uh, so who am I? Who's this guy up front? Uh, Feynman taught physics X. Can I, am I famous enough to teach physics X? No, no, no. Sadly, I'm no Feynman. I'm far from it. Uh, I'll read my, my slide, in fact, although he didn't read his slides. Although Feynman's popular lectures were perhaps the main motivating factor for this course, I claim neither to be the scientist nor the teacher that Feynman was. Furthermore, I'm not even a famous professor at a famous university. I'm an okay professor at a state university. Michigan Technological University is a, one of the state universities supported by state funds in Michigan. Michigan Tech's a good school. We're listed in the top tier of U.S. News and World Report, although near the bottom of the top tier. Uh, and there's a lot of really good students here, a lot of really good students here who self-select because they're interested in math and science, and they wouldn't come here if they weren't. So the student body at Michigan Tech is actually surprisingly strong. Still, I see a need for a course like this, I think, across the nation, because I think there's a lot of hungry physics majors and hungry students and hungry people out there in the world who want to know more about the basic concepts, but have don't have as much resources to go to as possible. Now, there are recourses. There are famous books. There's books by Feynman, by books by people like Brian Greene. Um, and there are some lectures on YouTube. But I don't know of anything really quite like this. Um, hopefully, others will follow, and this will become outdated in just a couple of years. OK, so who am I? I am a professor of physics at a US State University. I do research. I have over 50 refereed publications and over 1,500 citations. So citations are something that's important at in, in universities to show that people are actually following your work and that somebody reads some of the papers that you write. I've published in several areas. I've published in black holes and cosmology and something called gravitational lensing, things, something called gamma ray bursts, and something called sky monitoring. So I'm really an astrophysicist. I'm not really a pure physicist in that sense. But I, I've been doing this for a while, and so I have some publications I know a little bit. I've been thinking about some of these things for decades, since before I was a physics major. Um, do am I afraid of math? Well, I taught graduate level math physics last year at Michigan Tech. So we have a graduate program here, which is a good one. And uh, so I'm not necessarily afraid of the math, but I don't usually think so much in math. I think more in concepts, so I'm going to try to teach more how I think. Uh, some people might know me because I am a creator and editor for a popular wedge page called the Astronomy Picture of the Day, which does well in terms of web popularity. Uh, another reason uh, you might want to, why I'm doing this is because I'm here and now, I see a need, 
So you, maybe in the future there will be other venues you can go and do, but right now this might be one of the few chances you get to see lectures like this. And I'm willing to take the risk. It was actually a little bit of a possibly a coincidence and a little bit of a favor that I'm being allowed to teach this course at all, because many physics programs don't have something like this. Okay, so for the internet audience, um, you can go to iTunes, um, iTunes University, uh, you'll find these lectures listed as they occur. They're being taught this time in the fall semester of uh, 2010. Um, also, there is something called the asterisk, which is started off as the discussion board for astronomy picture of the day, and there are a lot of intelligent people on there. There's my past astronomy course. I have all the lectures on there. They're all there. Um, and they don't even require a textbook. So one of my one of my things I'm trying to do these days, I'm trying to teach without textbooks because I, in my opinion, a Wikipedia and online resources are eclipsing textbooks. Uh, we're working on, and I'm reasonably confident now, that this will be available on YouTube. So you can search for them on YouTube or you can go to the listings on nightskylive.net, which on the asterisk button board, and um, find these linked to, to YouTube there. Uh, there will be no textbook for this class either. Partly because Wikipedia is relatively strong in these areas. In physics, which doesn't change very much, Wikipedia has a lot of things going for it. If you, wanted to, if you demanded a book, I would guess the Feynman book called The Character of Physical Law, uh, which is available over Amazon and places like that, uh, is really a great book uh, where he explains a lot of fundamental concepts. I've read it several times. I read it when I was a physics major, and it is really explains things exceptionally well. Now, what's going to happen here is these lectures will be about 15 minutes each, and there will be about 50 of them. So after every 15-minute period, I'll just stop, and 15 minutes is dictated by two reasons. One, it's the maximum right now in fall 2010 that YouTube will allow uh, a standard video to be uploaded, and the other reason is because I, I myself would be reluctant to download a 15-minute video. It'd be kind of long and boring. 15 minutes is maybe stretching the expense attention span of people willing to, to look at these snippets. Okay, this is specifically for the MTU class. Uh, this is being taught as an advanced undergraduate class at Michigan Tech. Uh, you must log on to the class Blackboard page at courses.mtu.edu listed here. The official course number is 4999. If you haven't done this, don't expect to get credit for the class just because you saw the videos or downloaded. Uh, you have to, to do that. Um, so on there, there's a syllabus, grading information, lecture schedule. You don't have to come to class, but I'd appreciate it. Uh, class grades will be, the first thing is a one-page exposi exposition on what constitutes plagiarism because of the next two things, and because I don't want to hear other people's thoughts on the online forum. So it's just one page written by yourself, handed to me, signed, or sent to me by September 15. The second thing, which is pretty large, is I want people to discuss the lectures on the online forum that you see on courses.mq.edu. I have that at 40%. What, what do you do? You, what you do is you just say what you thought about the lecture, say what you thought things, cool things were, number of good curiosity-based questions, and answers to other people's questions. Two 15-minute summer, two five-page summaries, please, during the semester. The first due October 1st. The next one due, I think, December 1st. I'll show you that. Uh, they have to be five pages. They will be uh, summaries of the lectures, I've decided. And they will, you can use my PowerPoint slides as, a, um, as an outline. You should add your own original thoughts and problems. You should add two concept-based multiple choice problems that could be used on the final exam, and some might be. Uh, in addition, those are in addition to the five pages. And you have to tell me what is the right answer and why to your two uh, concept-based multiple choice problems. A second one will be due um, on December 1st. And then the final will be a final exam. Uh, I haven't come up with the details of the final. It might be in an actual classroom. It will be perhaps 50 to 100 concept-based questions. Won't be very mathematically oriented. Uh, will be conceptually based oriented. Um, and that will be 25% of the grade. And I've tried to make this an Audra font, but it wouldn't do it. Um, so, oops, based on that, oops, excuse me. Uh, I will wrap up this 15-minute segment. And I welcome, even if you're not in this class, even if you're just catching this on the, the web, please, if you're interested, just scroll down and find a class that you think might be interested, a lecture snippet you might be interested in, and I'll see you then. But you'll see me then. Bye.